hello, hello, my podcast people, and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of my favorite podcast. So right off the bat, it is so windy outside. If you're watching the video, I'm very bright today. The sun has come out, but it is so windy. California has lost its mind. Just so much rain. Uh, so I'm happy it's not raining, but I think if I go outside, I will literally blow away. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. Um, also, quick update on my knee, because last Monday I did the knee episode, but like I've said a million times when I record this, it's before the actual, um, you know, day of the of the thing obviously the day that it gets released so uh knee is doing great i'm back to playing volleyball there is definitely some residual soreness i'll say i'll say but it doesn't feel like an injury there is definitely a difference between like being injured being sore um it's all in that medial area it almost feels like i need you know more padding there um, it feels more osseous, if you will, more bone related than anything. I don't feel any instability or anything like that. So I'm just going to keep working to increase the capacity, increasing the strength, um, increasing the loading capacity, the tissue tolerance there. And yeah, so that's the update on that. But let's hop into today's episode. We're talking about how to switch your niche. Yes, we're saying niche because it rhymes. If you want to say niche, that's fine. Uh, I was asked this specific question, how do I switch my niche? Uh, by two people that are very near and dear to me. They're in the mafia, they're in my ecosystem. And I was like, let me finally address this question. Um, so spoiler, like, the answer is that you just have to do it. Um, but I will go into some more tactical steps during this episode. And I also want to talk about how to pick your niche in the first place and when you should switch. There's never like necessarily a super perfect time, but I think there are more like ideal circumstances um, and things that you can do to kind of set yourself up to make that switch easier. So we're going to go into that. Of note, to me, niching down is about learning your no, meaning you're likely going to go through di different iterations of things. And I want you to experiment. That sounds like kind of weird, like a parent and like, I want you to experiment. I do. I want you to try different things and understand that you will learn your no as you go. Also, as a side, n your niche is the problem that you solve. It's not necessarily who you solve it for. Inherently, you're going to exclude some people by saying, this is the problem that I solve. But people tend to go real deep with like the demographics, demo, that's not weird, the demographic of, of who they're serving. What I really want to be focused on is the problem that you solve. Uh, but yes, we'll, yes, we'll leave it at that. Um, the, the big point that I want to, that I want to get out here is that you will learn your no as you go. So I want you to do the thing, be okay switching, uh, but understanding that the more specific and intentional we are with things from the get-go, the easier it will be to make those subsequent switches. And we can honestly use the experience and the skills that we gain in our initial niches um, to help us out with moving forward and, and whatever we decide to, to do and whatever we decide to move into. So Let's get into tactical stuff. Tactically, as it relates to switching your niche, like I said earlier, you just got to rip the bandaid. You just have to do the thing. If you want to make an announcement about it, I'm all for that. Just to give some clarity to your audience and being like, hey, I'm not talking about this anymore. This is what we're going to be doing moving forward. Um, understand that not, not everyone's going to go with you and that's okay. Uh, then from there, you're going to do the thing, change the things. You're going to change your content. You're going to change your Instagram handle, whatever handles make sense to change. The question I often get with this is, should I create a new Instagram account? If it's a completely different niche, yes, create a, a different account. With a completely new audience, right? If you're going in a completely, diff completely new direction, solving a different problem, which typically brings with it a new audience, if you keep that original account, it oftentimes just serves as vanity metrics and you're not actually going to sell anything. People are not going to buy because you came in, you know, for this specific thing and now suddenly you're over here. It doesn't make sense for them. So, yeah, you're like, oh, cool, I have this number, but you're actually going to get end up getting very frustrated because you're like, I'm putting content out. It's not landing. I'm getting no traction. I'm not selling anything. And honestly, we're talking about business here. So if you're going in a completely new direction, then, yeah, it makes sense to change. If you are solving a different problem, but it's for the same audience, then it can make sense to stay with that same account that you had before. This is what I did, right? So I've always gone B2B. I inadvertently started going B2B, right? Business to business. I was putting out content that was resonating with other physical therapists. I was teaching them how to be better providers, better clinicians. 
I went from that into teaching them about business. So I was just changing the problem I was solving for them, but the audience in that regard stayed the same. So I know earlier I said that niching down is about the problem that you solve. Absolutely. So it wasn't going to be for everyone, but if you're looking at the demographic that was served, it did remain the same. So if you're going same demographic, solving a different problem for them, but not necessarily completely different, right? I was teaching them how to do the thing. I was teaching them how to sell the thing. So there was a lot of overlap there. And in that regard, it made sense to keep my my original account. I kept my original account for YouTube. This is a little bit different here. I kept my original account for YouTube. I had a big discussion with my guy, Doc Joe O, um, about this. And we largely did that because of the brand awareness that was already there and established. But I have fully accepted that it's going to take longer for me to start really seeing, I'm kind of starting to see some already, but to really get the success in that realm, because inadvertently, I'm going to use that word again, I was going B to C on that platform. So I was just putting exercises and, and movements out on that platform. And it was being consumed seemingly by, and based on like the comments on some of the things, by the average Joe, by the consumer. So it was B to C. Now I'm 100% putting the same stuff that I have on Instagram. I'm putting the all my business content out in there. We're going B to B, and that's a different audience. So we kept it the same, but I also understand that that's going to be turning the Titanic there, feeding new things, and then waiting for the algorithm to serve it to the right people. Um, so that it's like, yeah, okay, I understand who you serve and you know what you're doing. So I've accepted that it's going to take to take longer. That in mind, or like a good segue there, is the expectation management. When you switch your niche, understand that it's going to take as long as it takes. Like, I don't want to say like, oh, if you do it this way, it'll go faster. Like, it takes as long as it takes. And I think if we go into everything, understanding that, recognizing that, realizing that, accepting that, it sets us up for success. So the concerns now that I see, right? So that's literally it for the tactical side of it. It's literally that. The concerns that I see are twofold or that I hear are twofold. One, the big one, is that people are concerned that they're going to be letting people down or that their audience is still going to want their old content. And the second concern is that they're leaving money on the table. I hear this less, but I know that some people listening to this or watching this have that concern, so I want to address those things. So as it relates to letting people down or you know you having to have that discussion because people are going to want this older content from you, Real talk, Let's cut through the bullshit here. It's going to suck, but ultimately it's unsustainable. That conversation could suck and you're going to feel bad, right? But un- ultimately it is unsustainable to have, oh, I'm going to let someone down and use that as your a form of motivation. It is 100% unsustainable. It may get you through initially and keep you going for a little bit, but it's going to stop. So I dive into this concept and of motivation Um intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation and developing motivation and helping your patients to develop motivation in episode 354 of my show on the mic. We will link that. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, That episode was inspired by, uh, I went and spoke at the Raise the Bar conference last year, 2022 in Florida, Florida. And at that conference, Dr. Lisa Lewis spoke and it was all about motivation. And I was like, holy shit, I didn't know these things existed like this, this framework and these concepts because I'm not a psychology major or anything like that. Um, So I go into that in that episode. So if you want to go dive down that rabbit hole, definitely go check that out. So as it relates to this, this model of um, self-determination, whether we're A, motivated or intrinsically motivated, extra, extrinsically motivated, the concern about letting people down is a form of what's called external regulation. And that's only like one step above not being motivated at all. So if we're looking at that self-determination continuum, it's at the very beginning. I'm trying to like use my hands if you're watching the video, but I'm never sure because the screen gets reversed and I'm like, is it on the right side or the left side? But it's at the beginning of the continuum. So we're very much towards external motivation, which we all know, we all inherently understand this. External motivation only gets you but so far. At some point, it has to be your thing. You have to be doing this thing because you want to be doing it because it means something to you. So... Yes, I understand that you're going to have concerns. You're going to feel bad because you care. Right? You're going to feel bad about uh, possibly letting people down and not being able to give them what they want. But if you keep doing that, it's only going to last but for so long in terms of keeping you motivated to do this thing. So I know I could have gone deeper into like, oh, your worth and all the other shit. But like at the end of the day, it's not a sustainable uh, way of doing things. So this is why I encourage you to move away from that sooner than later. Second point that people tend to be concerned about is leaving money on the table. I really don't like that phrase at all. I've said it numerous times because if it's on the table, you can go back and get it. But 
realistically, your better bet is to switch your niche when that money doesn't matter. So if you need money, right, not just because like, you're like obsessed with money, but money is a resource. And if you need it, you need to pay your bills, things like that. Don't switch your niche yet. Pay those bills, right? Sometimes you got to do stuff that you don't want to do so that you can do stuff that you really want to do later. Uh, so yeah, that's the two points that I got with that. Okay, so let's move into the back half of this episode. All right, because we talked about you know, kind of the tactical side of things for switching. But what I want us to consider is if we are switching, then let's switch into something that's we're, is sustainable, right? That we're going to want to be in for quite some time. So this point, I think, is going to be helpful for those that are switching and looking at the new niche um, and also helpful for people that are just starting out and just looking for your niche in general. 100% right now, I'm going to plug my workbook. It's free. It's called the FT3 FT3 stands for first, this, then, that. Uh, and I developed this because I wanted better answers. And we know if we want better answers, we got to ask better questions. The drills that I saw people doing down, doing down, the drills that I saw people using to help folks niche down, they just were too nebulous. They weren't asking enough questions. And so I was like, well, I'm going to create a worksheet, create a workbook that asks more questions. So this thing has 41 questions in it. And it's designed to help you understand and identify the problem that you solve, the problem that you're the best at solving, who you're solving it for, and kind of give you like an, an overall granular approach of what are you currently doing versus what do you want to be doing and you know what makes sense for you to lean into. Like I said, it's 100% free. If you go to themovementmaestro.com forward slash FT3, it'll take you right to the landing page where you can put your information in. Or you can go to the show notes, themovementmaestro.com forward slash 443, which is this episode number. Your choice. Um, everything's linked in the in the show notes, though. So at least on Apple. I don't, I, don't list, I don't have Spotify. I'm old and I don't like change. And I just, I never got into Spotify, but it definitely is all there on Apple. And if you're like, it's not there on uh, Spotify. Okay. Sorry. Uh, you go ahead to head to the, um, the actual page on the, web, on the interwebs and that's the moonmeasure.com forward slash four, four, three. So as it relates to picking your niche, whether we're moving into a new one or, or we're just starting out, understand that and I've said it a million times. I, I borrowed this from Danny Mate. Businesses are built on solutions to problems and people want to pay people who they believe can solve their problems, aka they want to solve experts, people with a track record or people who have demonstrated that, yeah, I have proficiency with this. To that end, if you're picking your niche, it's easier to go with something that you have established expertise in. But if you're like, man, but I'm trying to switch away from that, totally fine. Just accept that this will grow slower as a business because you haven't demonstrated your proficiency, your expertise yet. People don't trust you yet. They don't believe that you can do the thing yet. Perfect example would be if I'm like, hey, I want to switch my niche and I want to go into coaching volleyball or, you know, doing volleyball stuff on the interwebs and on social media. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat here in that I am the movement maestro. So I have an audience that knows that I understand movement inherently. So I have that leg up. But if I was to just like start from scratch, right? So I didn't have the movement maestro behind me. I was just starting out. I don't know that much about volleyball. Like I am, I've only been playing since 2020. So if I was going to switch my niche, I have to understand that this is going to grow slowly because my ability to demonstrate my expertise, my ability to actually solve problems for people is, is fledgling. It's very young. It's very, you know, it's, it's in its infancy. So if that's where you're at and you're switching into a niche, you're like, well, I'm just learning about this thing as I go. Okay, but it's going to grow very slowly. That line that's out there about you don't have to be like one step ahead of your clients or customers is, is a lie. You got to be like 50 steps ahead of them. You got to be able to answer their questions. And if, if me saying this makes you feel like insecure... And when you take a step back and just say, cool, I have more to go. I have more room to grow. I have more to learn and more experience to gain. And that's an awesome place to be at as well. Right? I just don't want to be blowing smoke and being like, oh, you just got to be one step ahead and you'll be fine. No, you got to be 50 steps ahead. That's when people are going to be like, yeah, I go to that person. I know that they got me. I know that they can solve my problems. I know that they can answer my questions and, and I trust them. Okay. All right. So that is the how to switch and you know, how to identify your niche if you are switching. Second part is when should you switch? Now, again, I don't think there's like a necessarily a perfect time for this. But like I said earlier, in relation to the people's concerns about leaving money on the table, I do think that switching your niche, we should perhaps wait until it makes sense financially. So yeah, you got to know your numbers. Y'all already know anytime I bring up numbers, I plug my 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 woman, my girl, um, Sandy, 
She's my CPA. She is Fit Money Coach on Instagram. We'll link that. Um, learn your stuff. Learn your numbers. Get a, a understand how much you need to be making and when it actually is okay and safe for you to switch. So you're not operating from a place of of urgency. Like I said before, sometimes you got to do stuff that you don't really love, but maybe you're good at and comes easily, and you have proficiency and you have you know ability to make money, so that you can ultimately do the things that you love. Outside of that, I, again, I don't think there's necessarily a perfect time to switch. Um, you just kind of got to rip the Band-Aid. I will, however, say use any assists, any you know, alley-oops that are tossed up there that may come your way. For me, that was COVID. So y'all know, or if you're new to the podcast, you don't know, but um, you may not know. But if you've been following me, my OGs, I started off, I'm a physical therapist, I started off providing movement content for other movement professionals. My first post was September 24th, 2014. I switched and went all in on business in 2020. It wasn't that long ago, folks. Maybe you're like, oh, wait, that was before then. No, I was doing things in the behind the scenes. So I didn't like bring this content front facing and be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have been doing business stuff behind the scenes and helping people and knew I had proficiency with this for years. But I didn't switch the forward facing content and truly like switch my niche and the problem I was solving for this demographic until 2020. And COVID served that up to me on a silver platter. I was like, I don't want to travel anymore for work. I've been traveling for five years. And I was like, listen, I don't care about hamstrings. I don't want to do another post about hamstrings. I don't want to do another post about hip flexors. A little cheat code for you folks. If you're in the movement space, posts about hip flexors, hamstrings, and SI joints do very, very well because everyone's all messed up with those things. We could go into why, but I don't have the time for that right now. So if you're looking for a niche, become the hamstring helper. Become the SI joint savior. I have yet to see one, and I promise you, you would do very well. Uh, But I did not switch until 2020. Um, but COVID handed me that. I was like, I don't want to talk about hamstrings. I don't want to talk about SI joints. I don't want to be traveling anymore. And when COVID was like, hey, you don't have to travel anymore because you can't travel anymore. And everyone is online right now. And everyone's asking, how do I bring my business online? And I was like, here we go. This is what I want to be doing. Right. Understand, I said this before, I'm going to bring it back. Not everyone is going to come with you. Not everyone's going to move with you when you pivot. And that's okay. That is totally okay. Take the ones that, that come with you and you know over deliver like crazy and thank the ones that were there and if you want and what i did is provide resources for them if you're like hey i'm moving i'm changing but here's some great accounts to follow here's some great resources and also for me personally i still had like two thousand three thousand plus posts all about movement and they are categorized by uh by what is it called hashtag so if you go to maestrify your x where x is whatever body part you want to learn about there's a bunch of posts for each of those maestrify your low back maestrify your ankle maestrify your knee bunch of posts. I'm like, they're still there if you want them, but you'd be best served by following and learning from people that are still in it and really, really passionate about it. Okay. I'm looking at my notes here and I'm like, but I think that's it. I'm really passionate about this one. Um, Also, I'm standing and I, I do definitely speak better and faster when I'm standing. So maybe we'll continue with this. And I'm sorry if that means that you can no longer listen to me on 1.2 or 1.25, whatever it is, times speed apologies. But there you have it. That is, in my humble opinion, how to switch your niche. Ultimately, it is about ripping that bandaid off. There's never necessarily a perfect time. If you if the universe does serve you a little alley-oop, make sure that you take it and boom, shakalaka. What is that reference? If you know that reference, shoot me a DM, shoot me a text, 310-737-2345. What is that from? Boom, shakalaka. He's heating up. I'm showing my age. Uh, But hopefully this episode helps you with either identifying your niche if you're getting started or identifying the direction you want to go in if you are switching that niche, kind of how to time that, uh, and subsequently, hopefully, ensuring that the new niche that you have moved into is not something that you're going to want to leave immediately. All right, that's all I got for you. As always, endlessly appreciative for every single one of you. Until next time, friends, maestro.